Randy Robinson at Life Today TV here with uh, one of the strangest pastors I've ever known. <laughs> <laughs> That's Matthew Barnett with the church, Angelus Temple. But the big thing that, that I always thought, man, that's just, that's wild, is the Dream Center. So for people that don't know, short version, what is a Dream Center? Uh, the Dream Center is it's like a 24-7 spiritual hospital. If you can imagine like a 7-Eleven that's always open, mm -hmm. but like a 24-7 church that all hours of the day is ministering to some of the biggest issues in America today, homelessness, runaway street kids. So not only do we have the big celebration on Sunday, Sunday is not the destination spot for the church. It's the launching point for what goes on Monday through Saturday as we begin to take care of people, detoxing off drugs in the middle of the night. Families show up homeless, we take them in and help them get their life back together again. So that, if you could just imagine a 24-7 church that's pretty much meeting every social type of need in the community, that's what takes place. When you say hospital, but you literally mean hospital because that was the old Queen of Angels Hospital right there on the freeway, you're close to Hollywood. And Hollywood Freeway. Yeah, okay, the Hollywood Freeway. Yeah. It literally is a hospital turned into a church. So yeah. physical hospital to spiritual hospital. That's exactly right. It was actually Paramount Studios was gonna buy it for uh, $16 million. Yeah. And the what Catholic the Church show? What sold was the it show to they were doing? Oh my goodness, they were doing Ocean's Eleven. They've done... Uh, there, was a, there was a prime time hospital, like a doctor NYPD show. NYPD, they did there. Um, yeah. They've done every type of show. The ER was filmed ER, there. ER, that's the one I was thinking of. Yeah, yeah and so that. it was like for years being used as movie sets and then the Catholic Church ended up selling to us because I liked our vision more than Hollywood for $3.9 million against a $16 million offer. That is awesome. So how were you when you started being the pastor at this place for, you know, rehab and... Well, your definition of saying that you're the strangest pastor that I've ever met, that's exactly right, because at 20 years of age, I came into LA, totally had no experience in this kind of ministry. I got basically a word from God at youth camp when I was 16 that someday I would be in LA. And just going on that at 20, my dad was looking for a pastor to pastor the church in, in the inner city of L.A. And all 10 of them turned it down. They all wanted to go to L.A. They were thinking Hollywood, Sunset Boulevard. And then when they saw the church, they said, I don't feel oh, led of the Holy yeah. Spirit. So I was 11th on the list of 10, basically, as just a one-year fill-in. That's all I was supposed to be there for one year. And now I've just been there for 17 years and just meeting the needs of people. Yeah, and by strange, I don't mean you personally are strange. <laughs> oh, I no, mean, your calling is odd. It's unusual. I mean... You're out there. I've been out there. I mean, it's it's scary. Yeah. You know, but probably less so now after you've been there so long. You know? Oh. But I mean, but the right, the gang, literally like gangs everywhere, drugs everywhere, prostitution all over the place. I mean, how do you how did you get through that? You were 20 years old and you're pastoring in this hellhole. You know. Well, you know, when I was 20 years of age, every night I would go home and just cry. I, mean, I would just weep. I would say, God, I can't do this. Every night I failed for two years straight without any success. And I just fail. And, and oftentimes people get real worried about failure. They think it defines them. But n failure often recreates people. I mean, some of the greatest work that God ever does is when you lose everything and you fail because that's when God has the raw ingredients to recreate something. And that's what he did in my life. He recreated my vision. I came to L.A. thinking, man, Tommy Barnett's son, I'm going to preach on Sundays and thousands are going to come. No one knew who I was. No one knew my reputation. No one knew that I came from a mega church. So I was left all alone in the streets of L.A. as a young kid losing everything. One night I'm weeping in my apartment in downtown L.A. God says, stop your crying. I want you to take a walk in Echo Park. That night, I walked through Echo Park. I mean, I thought God was mad at me for being a big old baby. He was just going to finish me off in a drive-by shooting, you know, and get somebody there well, who really could do the job. And that's a legitimate concern there. I mean, <laughs> and I, yeah. the violence at Echo Park back then especially was oh, rampant. And I'm walking through the streets that night. I saw helicopters looking for criminals, young boys up against police cars. God spoke a word to me that changed my life. He said, tonight, I want you to die to every dream you have on your wall at home. I want you to rip it off your wall and never think about success ever again as long as you live. And I want you to spend the rest of your life meeting the needs of these boys up against police cars, these people that are living in the park that are homeless. And that night, God, I laid down all the plans of my life that I had, and I picked up something better. I picked up God's cause, and God's cause was people. It was people of all shapes and forms in every direction. And I went home, and I ripped up all my five-year preacher school visions and dreams, and God said, just love, serve, give what you have away, and make a difference, and let me build the dream. So I laid down my dream, I picked up God's cause, and then I began to find dreams I never knew that I had. God showed me things that were never even in my heart when I came to Los Angeles. Sounds like you lost your life for His sake and yeah. found it. Exactly. Yeah. So how many people you got out there now? We have, well, we have 8,000 people attending the church, but we have 40,000 people a week 
that are being touched by the outreach ministries. 2,000 hot meals every single day. We have medical trucks going out to the community. We do 27 feeding sites a week in the neighborhood. 30,000 people alone in that. Clothing stores, 273 different outreaches. Even got recording studios for kids in the neighborhood. A coffee shop run by kids in the community. A fitness center, basketball leagues, sports leagues fully engage in the life. It's literally what's happened is we've changed the atmosphere of the community. Yeah. And a police officer said that the, re the way that you ch change crime is you change the atmosphere. Well, how do you change the atmosphere? You outlast what's evil by doing right. Mm. You do it for so long, you do it for so consist much consistency, you do it every single day to where you wear out the opposition because of the commitment that you've made in the community. And the greatest testimony that we could ever make in the neighborhood is to stay when everyone else leaves. Liquor stores have come and gone, oh. but the church has always been there. That's awesome. You've seen a lot of lives changed. Yeah. You could probably tell me a lot of stories. That we could probably sit here all night telling me stories. Yeah. You find that that's your cause, changing lives? It is my cause, and it's that simple, too. You know, it's an interesting question. It's a great question because I thought my cause was to build something great. I mean, God is... You know, he's given us 650,000 square feet of building. He's given us millions of dollars of stuff. But to be honest with you, I really believe all God was looking for was my heart. I believe he was saying, once I have your heart, I'll give you what you need to fulfill your cause. I know what your cause is now. I know what, I know what you have the capacity contained now because you're going to use it for others. And I think sometimes our vision is being held back as God's saying, well, are you really going to use it for others? Are you going to use it for yourself? Yeah. But when God knows that he has the raw ingredients of using it for the sake of others, then the multiplication starts and then God starts building the dream and you wake up in a hospital and that was never in the game plan and yeah. you wake up in the famous Angelus Temple where Amy Simple McPherson used to pastor and that wasn't in the game plan. Pretty much everything that I'm doing is not in the original plan, yeah. but the plan of myself is not what God had, it was his cause. And when I lost myself in his cause, now I'm just, you know, continually dreaming. You'll say, how do you stay dreaming all the time? You meet one need, and then when you meet one need, it opens up the door to another need. We, we started reaching out to homeless families. Then we found out within those families that there were people that had friends and relatives that had drug addictions. We take care of that need and we find out there's human trafficking. And then we find out there's teenage. So once you start meeting needs, you'll start discovering all these visions in your life that you ever, never even knew that you had in the first place. So why did you decide to write a book about finding your cause? Is it just your story? I'm assuming you're showing people a lot of you know, what we're talking about right here. Yeah, oh, the yeah. book is filled with ordinary people doing extraordinary things. Okay. Young teenage boys that were sentenced to juvenile hall that end up leading outreaches of 700 people every Saturday. A mother that took in uh, two foster care kids that were, the, that were blind and deaf from being abused and locked in cages. She was featured in People magazine and I called Elena Strickland one day. I said, I want you to work with us. And this girl started taking in 17 of the most hurting children that were the most abused in the foster care system. It just started by one, meeting the need of one, and then another. And the whole book reveals the process of how people begin to rise up to do things that they never knew they can do, accomplish things that were never in their heart, and doing the extraordinary things by just ordinary acts of obedience in the beginning. And oftentimes it seems so small, so insignificant, but it was a starting point that God needed to multiply the revival that he wanted to do within that person's life. And the most people don't find their cause because there's so much fear locked up in their life and really a lot of self-centeredness. I can't do this or I can't do that. It's never been what you, about what you can do or can do. It's been about giving God what you have and letting him dictate the course of your life. You know, the Bible says, in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Those 12 words changed my life. And so I went home and I drew a line, in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path over here. And I said, God, I'm gonna stand on the right side of the dream. I'm gonna acknowledge you and I'll let you direct my path. But most of the time we stand on the side of wanting to direct our path, wanting our vision to happen, but we never get on the business of acknowledging God by helping people. And once you do that, then the process begins. Dude, amazing stuff, amazing stuff. And, and, and the book, I haven't read it, sounds like a great read. If it's telling your story and, and telling the stories of others that you've reached, uh, that would explain why it's a New York Times bestseller, right? It is, and all the proceeds <laughs> go to the Dream Center. So it's, I've given all the royalties, everything back to the ministry, wow. and just believing in these tough times that maybe this book can be a, a catapult to move forward. And, you know, and Tyndale, who worked with us, wanted to make it a missionary project. That's why they're giving like 32% of the royalties back into the work of God. So I, 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 it's an exciting journey of someone at 20 years of age who got it wrong, who had the motivation wrong. For two years of my life, I wanted success, and I realized that God said, all I want is your heart. 
And uh, there's people out there that are watching here today that you say, man, I don't know where to begin. I don't have enough and I, I don't know where to start. Just get started. All God needs is a little bit that's in your hand to start the process of a dynamic cause within your life. Dude, thanks for taking the time to talk oh, to us. Thank you. Be sure to check out Matthew's book and you can check out his website at dreamcenter.org. Thanks again. Thank you.